I'm going down the Mississippi. Oh, I'm going down a southern road. And if you never see me again, remember that I had to go. Remember that I had to go. The summer of 1964 in Mississippi is also known one of the most violent of the civil rights movement. But it was also one of the most important years because of the strides made by the civil rights activists across the country. In Mississippi, there are few who are more synonymous with the struggle there than a man who until the civil rights movement began had never been to Mississippi. Bob Moses became the leader of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee on Voter Education and Registration in Mississippi during the most turbulent year in the nation's history since the Civil War. Moses was born to a middle-class Harlem family and attended college at Hamilton College in 1956 and earned a master's degree in philosophy at Harvard. Toward the end of his time at Harvard, Moses became very active in the civil rights movement and became a field secretary for SNCC. He had a vision of grassroots and community-based leadership to carry the movement for voter registration forward in Mississippi. In 1964, Bob Moses became the co-director of the Council of Federated Organizations, or CLFO. He organized his most famous project, Freedom Summer, under this organization. The goal of Freedom Summer became twofold, register as many African Americans in rural Mississippi as possible and gain recognition from the Main Street Democratic Party with the formation of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, which focused on black representation at the Democratic National Convention held later that year in Atlantic City, New Jersey. To educate and take rural Mississippians to the polls, Moses recruited white college students from well-known universities to send to Mississippi. The reason he chose this demographic was because he knew that if something happened to one of the white students from a fluid family in the North, television crews and a host of resources would descend on Mississippi. Moses planned to use a form of nonviolent activist that he knew after years of working in Mississippi would most likely cause white Mississippians to react with violence. He he knew he would never be able to get the attention of the White House and national news media if a local black Mississippian were attacked, but if a white student from an affluent northern family was attacked, the rest of the nation would take notice. Before schools were sent down to work in Mississippi, they attended one of SNCC's field schools that taught students how to fill out proper paperwork at Mississippi courthouses in order to register to vote. Students also learned how to approach local black families and even how to react if approached by Mississippi law enforcement. Perhaps, most disturbing, students were taught how to minimize physical harm by learning how to best protect themselves if they were ever beaten or attacked by white Southerners. Having recently attended one of Moses' schools in Ohio, James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Mikey Schwerner were in Neshoba County, Mississippi, investigating a recent church fire when the three were reported missing. The three had been arrested by local law enforcement and then released, only to be attacked and murdered shortly after they were released. Their bodies were dumped at a construction site and buried. The three civil rights workers who disappeared in Mississippi last Sunday night still have not been heard from. A search has thus far produced only one clue, the burned out station wagon in which the three were last seen riding. Andrew Goodman, a 20 year old college student from New York. After a lengthy FBI investigation, something that rarely occurred when the victim was a lone black local, the bodies of the three civil rights workers were found, and local men were arrested for the killings. Since murder was a state crime, the men received a jury trial made up of locals who refused to convict whites for the murder. Some convictions were obtained based on federal charges of violating the civil rights of Goodman, Cheney, and Swarner, but they did little time for their participation in the murders. I guess that's the best way to put it. There were a lot of people that might have gotten involved after that because they didn't think it was right, and it wasn't right. But I think they might not have gotten involved had that not have happened. If if they don't find the car in Bogachito, if they don't find them in the Earth and Dam, if they don't find them at all, it's easy to say that they ran off. 
but the way they found them, the way they were buried, the way they were murdered, I think there were a lot of people, even your normal person, that said, you know, this this isn't right. The, we need to do something about this. And I, I think it, it not only thrust it in the limelight, I, I think it really did help to further the cause. I mean, that you don't, you don't really want to say that with murder, but I, I really do think it did. Knowing that the, the original press conference that happened from these three going missing was with Martin Luther King Jr. You know, seeing that original press conference with MLK and then being able to stand with Ben Cheney, James's brother, at what I guess we could consider the final press conference after the trial was over. And realizing that I, it it had come full circle, I'd gotten to see it. I'd gotten to see history made. Very rarely do we get to say that in our life. Moses instructed volunteers that any were welcome to go home, and no one would blame them. But their loyalty to Moses and to the African Americans in Mississippi motivated them to overcome the tragic events and their own fears and move forward with their goals of registration. This was not the first murder of activists in Mississippi or the South, but the deaths of the Northern white students had attracted increasing notice from the national media. Many African American volunteers were angered that these murders appeared to be getting publicity because two of the victims were white Northerners. I suspect that if Mrs. Mr. Cheney, who is a native Mississippian Negro, had been alone at the time of the disappearance, that this case, like so many others who have, that have come before, would have gone completely unnoticed. Moses' approach helped ease tensions. Even the Freedom Summer volunteers had to struggle with the idea of nonviolence, of blacks and whites working together and related issues. Nonviolence was not an easy sale. Blacks and whites working together was also not easy. These tensions were enormous, but Moses' leadership style was a major binding factor for a number of volunteers staying. Moses was instrumental in the organizing of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, a group that challenged the all-white regular Democratic Party delegates from the state at the party's 1964 National Convention in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Because the Democratic regulars had for decades excluded African Americans from the political process in Mississippi and oppressed them, the MFDP wanted their elected delegates seated at the convention. Their challenge received national media coverage and highlighted the civil rights struggle in the state. The work of Bob Moses and his leadership in Freedom Summer and the formation of the Mississippi Democratic Party helped get national support for the Civil Rights Act of 1965, as well as the Voting Rights Act. These were major triumphs that occurred as a direct result of Freedom Summer and the tragic events that transformed many who had not previously been involved in the Civil Rights Movement. Ironically, Bob Moses never wanted to be in the spotlight. But his keen sense of strategic planning and his talent for organization thrust him to the front of the movement in Mississippi. The harder that Mississippi pushed against the civil rights movement, the more clever he became at overcoming those obstacles. Young people working with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC as we call it, are characterized by restless energy. They seek radical change in race relations in the United States. Their world is upset, and they feel that if they are ever going to get it straight, they must upset it more. Moses triumphed over Jim Crow, not so much as a voice of protest, but more by means of making democracy visible in Mississippi. I'm going down to Mississippi Oh, I'm going down a southern road And if you never see me again Remember that I had to go Remember that I had to go It's a long road down to Mississippi It's a short road back the other way if the cops pull you over to the side of